Hey, what's up, Sonic Academy? Paul Lasky here of P. Lask, and I'm coming at you today with a series of tech tips that are centered around sound design for pads, atmosphere, texture, and drone type sounds. Now, this is something that I really enjoy doing as a sound designer, but also as a way to create background, atmosphere, and texture for my mixes and my songs. Um, I also enjoy doing this um, when I make presets and um, when I do other sorts of sound design work. If you're doing any sort of sound design work, maybe for uh, film or television or games or things like that, and you need to create sound effects, some of these tips I think will be very helpful to you as well. So we'll focus on things like just, of course, you know, straight up synthesis, a few different synthesis techniques. We'll look at some sample manipulation, use of effects like reverb and delay, um, different ways to manipulate those to create new texture sounds. So a variety of different tips and techniques here. Um, this is, of course, sort of assuming or a bit of a prerequisite to this would be that you have some basic knowledge of sound design when it comes to subtractive synthesis and certain effects processors like reverbs and delays and things like that. Um, all of these tips will be pretty accessible to anybody, I think. But yeah, if you have those prerequisites, you'll probably get a lot more out of this. Um, but anyway, uh, a lot of these tips are, of course, starting points for things that you can then take further, add additional processing and stuff like that. But my goal here with these tech tips is to get you going to maybe give you some new kind of off kilter or left field techniques for um, approaching your sound design rather than just opening up your favorite synth plugin and starting from scratch every time. So I had a lot of fun putting this one together. I'm looking forward to sharing it with you. Let's get right into it. pretty simple one and not so much one that has to do with creating your sounds but it's something that I find helps me stay inspired as I'm sound designing and as I'm creating pad and texture and drone sounds and things like that is to play chords I mean it's a simple tip but for a lot of us that might be easier said than done myself included I have a pretty decent working knowledge of music theory but when it comes to just putting my hands on the keyboard and playing good chords and remembering right off the bat every note that's in every scale, uh, I struggle with it sometimes. So what we can do very simply if we're using Ableton Live here is use the MIDI chord and scale effects and um, put those in front of our instrument. Now some synthesizers like Sonic Academy's very own Anna 2 has a chord memory um, effect in there, not so much an effect but a component of the synth chord memory device. Um, also, there are plugins like Cthulhu or Scalar 2 or Captain Chords or things like that that can help you with that. But if you don't have access to that stuff, that's okay because right inside of Ableton Live, we have these wonderful MIDI effects. So let's start with the chord first. So one of the things I like to do is I like to put the chord on and then I like to ask myself, okay, when I'm writing my song, am I writing in a major or a minor scale? Most of the time I'm writing in one or those two scales. And let's be honest, if I'm making house or techno music or something like that, it's probably gonna be a minor scale. So what I'll do is I'll use the chord and I'll just adjust two of these shift dials to give me one minor third interval. That's gonna give me, or plus three is gonna give me a minor third and then a perfect fifth. So if you don't know what this chord MIDI effect does, it basically adds additional intervals or adds additional notes on top of whatever note you're playing on the keyboard. So right now, for example, if I play a C note and all we're focusing on, I know this is a busy looking project, but all we're gonna focus on is this chords track right here. I'm gonna play a C note. And what we hear is a C minor chord. So it's this for me is triggering the D sharp or the E flat, I should say, and then the G. So those two additional notes are triggered by that. So if I play any note on the keyboard, I'm hearing that minor triad. But if I know that I wanna write in a specific scale, let's say today I feel like I wanna write in A minor, for example, well, I could start with A and I'll hear an A minor triad, but then any other notes I play, the chord is gonna just add those intervals and not necessarily pay attention to the notes that are in the scale that I'm trying to write in. So this is where the MIDI scale effect can come into play. So we can again find that under MIDI effects. Here's scale. Now for this one, this one's a little bit more complex and I'm not gonna necessarily spend the entire video explaining everything about it, but suffice it to say, we can choose a preset and you can see there's a lot of different scale presets here in Ableton Live 11. I'm gonna choose just the minor preset. We'll drag and drop it in and this is important. You wanna make sure that it's coming after the chord effect. And essentially what this scale effect will do is it will read any incoming notes, and if they're not in the scale that you choose here by using the bass control, so let's say, what was I saying, A minor, so we'll choose bass A, 
that means that um, that's using that as the tonic. So it means that any notes that are not in the A minor scale that might be coming into the MIDI effect here, they're going to be either sharped or flatted so that they are in the scale. And what we could do now is I could start with A, and essentially what I'm hearing is the one chord in the A minor scale, then I can play B, D, E, F, G, and then back to A. So essentially by playing one note at a time, I can hear every chord in a specific scale that I want to write in. And so as I'm designing my sounds, it makes it a lot easier because a lot of times when we're designing sounds, we're just kind of noodling around on the keyboard, right? And if you're just hearing one note at a time, it's not always the most inspiring thing. And usually when you're making pad sounds and, and ambient sounds and textures and drones and things like that, usually you'll be using those to play chords in your music. So I find this to be a good inspirational way to be able to hear chords and then also maybe start to get an idea in your mind of a chord progression just by playing one note at a time. So anyway, simple tip there just to kind of get us set up. I'll probably be using the chord and or the scale, maybe one, maybe both of them uh, as we go through the lessons. So like I said, this is something I like to do when I get going with my sound design just to keep me inspired so I can hear chords, so I can hear more of a lushness to the sound that I'm creating as I hear multiple notes at a time playing it back. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate the support from you guys. If you liked this video, then you know, smash that like button. And if you want to be notified about new content, hit the subscribe and the bell notifications. Peace.